Welcome, and I appreciate you coming out for our, our press conference here after the uh, straw poll results. As you know, this is the 2011 Values Voters Summit. This is the sixth annual summit that we've had of value voters from across the country. And this is the largest gathering of the value voters that we've had in the six years that we've conducted this summit here in Washington. The uh, registration numbers for this year were 3,406 uh, people that registered. There were uh, a little over 600 that registered today that came in. The second highest uh, total we had was in 2007 and that was 2,560. So nearly a thousand more here uh, in this election cycle than the last election cycle. You know, this is a values voter summit with a straw poll. We have folks that come, I would say the majority come here to hear from the candidates, hear about the issues, and then express a preference for the candidates. What, what we are here for is to give that opportunity to value voters to do a comparison of the candidates. This is not a straw poll with a meeting. Uh, this is a value voter summit. Now, as you heard, a, value, a, a straw poll sometimes creates more discussion than it resolves. But I want to give you the results that we passed out uh, for this year's results. Uh, Ron Paul had 732 votes, 37 percent of the vote. Second was uh, Herman Cain with 447 the votes, 23 percent of the vote. Third was Rick Santorum, 323 votes, 16 percent. Uh, fourth place, Rick Perry, 167 uh, votes at 8 uh, percent. And then we uh, it dropped down to uh, Mitt Romney had 88 votes with 4 percent of the vote, followed by Newt Gingrich. And then you can see the list, long list of uh, vice presidential uh, candidates. And I'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. Yes. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could just uh, explain why uh, Brian Fisher hit the after his bomb. No. Uh, this is a, if, if anyone who has been involved in putting on an event of this nature, of this size, with as many moving parts. When it comes down to it, you're just trying to put people in wherever they can fit in. Candidates get the preference in terms of when they're going to speak that fits in with their schedule. In the meantime, we try to hold blocks open for them Friday mornings, Saturday mornings, giving them the prime spots. And then we have to fit in the sponsors and others. And usually the candidates are some of the last to confirm. So there is, there is no... I'd like to say there's structure in the way that the, uh, the, the, the uh, agenda comes together, but it's more in how it, it just works out based on who can be here when. You know, I, I, I know we had a lot of young people here, a lot of college students, a lot from Liberty University uh, and other places, but I. I couldn't tell you how they voted. I mean, it's a secret ballot. Is there disappointment here that the Russ Paul won this thing and live libertarian? No, I think you just do the math. I mean, you, you see that, you know, Ron Paul, his campaign is, is very well organized in, in, in uh, showing up for straw polls. Uh, but they, they, we had 600 people registered this morning. They come in to hear their candidates speak, and then they, they vote and they leave. Uh, but I think the vast majority of those who come here, it, it's value voters who come here for a summit to talk about the issues and listen to the candidates. Uh, you know, it's amazing. This year I spent more time moving in the, uh, among the audience, talking to people, asking, you know, who, who's your preference? Who do you think? And they're really analyzing the candidates where they stand on the issues. Uh, and so I, I, I think that uh, the field is still somewhat fluid. And where people are going to go, but I think this was a, a great opportunity for people to see them side by side. And I think there'll be some things that uh, shape up in the field going forward. Were you, were you pleased with your uh, Bill Bennett and Glenn Beck stand up for Mormonism and for religious diversity after uh, Representative Patrick Jefferson's speech? Were you, were you uh, pleased with that? Do you agree with your opinion? Well, this let me be very clear. What this uh, 
uh, meeting it. This is to build a coalition of people based upon shared values to take back control of our country so that we can exercise religious freedom according to the dictates of our conscience. Um, I'm not going to gloss over there is a difference between uh, religions, but we're not here to discuss religions. That's not what the Values Voter Summit is about. I'm Southern Baptist, and we can't even get the same Baptist churches in our community together without arguing. So to think that we could bring together Christians from across the country to agree on those issues is, uh, is, is wishful thinking. We're here, and what the Values Voter Summit is about, and I think successfully doing, is drawing people together, as you've seen. People who have differences of opinions on some things, but coming together over a shared set of values that are essential to realizing America's future. of deciding where they want to go. They listen to the candidates here on how they express themselves on the issues, but not only on how they express themselves on the issues, but also passion, personality. You know, I heard a number of people say, you know what, I just, they were very personal, I connected with them. I, I, so this is really a testing ground of what, is going, what it's going to take for someone to capture the Republican nomination. Well, if I knew that question, I would be uh, I would be the you know one of those political gurus. I, I think that from what I see, it's still early in the process. Let me just take you back four years to this event when we had a straw poll. Uh, Mitt Romney won that straw poll that year. We we learned a lot of lessons about straw polls. We had uh, we had the online voting, which we have done away with. We've done everything to preserve the integrity of uh, this straw poll. Uh, we have uh, not allowed campaigns to buy blocks of tickets, which they attempted to do this year. Uh, so we've tried everything we can to make sure that every person that comes here uh, has to register individually and pay for their tickets. Well, that four year, four years ago. Uh, Mitt Romney was uh, leading in Iowa. Uh, Mike Huckabee was, you know, just trailing uh, on fumes. Uh, he left here with a very strong message and began to climb in Iowa and, and really took off. In fact, you know, he was the candidate that many were recruiting to try to get in this race because polling showed he could beat Barack Obama. But it took a while for that to settle out. I think we're still a few months away before you see people rallying. Can you just identify yourself, please? Be they're still working. Uh, I mean, I think you you saw the uh, the response. Herman Cain had people on their feet. Rick Santorum connected with people. Um, I, I think. Uh, there is still the, the hearts and the, the minds and the passions of the, the value voters are still there to be won. Points, if you would. Luke Cummer from the, the Daily. Um, first of all, you mentioned a message of shared values. Um, were you upset at, uh, or annoyed with uh, Pastor Jeffers at distracting from that message? And second of all, which campaigns um, tried to buy blocks of... Uh, yeah, the, the question in here was, was I uh, disappointed with the distraction uh, yesterday with uh, uh, Pastor Jeffress. Uh, yes, uh, that was not that was not said on the platform. Of what he said uh, was said in a, in a meeting with some reporters, apparently in the hallway. Uh, anything that distracts from the message here. But you know what? I think every year we've had some form of controversy. You can't bring this many people together, this many different speakers, this many different organizations, and not have something happen. But we're not going to get distracted by that. Again, our focus is building a coalition 
based on shared values. That's our message and that's where we're going. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were, as I said, there were 600 people, over 600 that registered today just for the day. Uh, there were a number of people that left after Ron Paul spoke. Again, I go back to the, we cannot control what other camp, what campaigns do. When we looked at having this Values Voter Summit, as we do in each election year, there's a threshold, 3%, at which we said the candidate needed to, to, to meet, and they were all invited. All of the candidates were invited who met that threshold. The Values Voter Summit that happens to have a straw poll. Uh, we are three percent in, in a national poll. Yes, uh, all of them that met that criteria were invited. So um, most who are here, the majority who are here, came I think to hear all of the candidates, hear about the issues and then express their preference in the straw poll. Not everybody that came actually participates in the straw poll. Some of you are just out of interest in what's going on. There may very well be that those 600 that came here today uh, came uh, as a part of the, the, the Ron Paul campaign. You know, I, I don't know that we don't track how someone votes. The there is a one-day registration fee of $75 as opposed to the full weekend registration, which is $99. And that is because some people can't make it on Fridays and they come on Saturdays. Yes? Uh, Jack, you said it's a good thing today. Um, you said candidates have some, some Romney and Perry might have some work to do. What else does someone like Romney need to do? Because he's kind of been at this for five years or something at this point. Is there anything he I actually thought he made a, a, a good speech here uh, today. I thought he, uh, and I talked with him briefly, I think he covered the points. Um, you know, I, he's just going to have to continue. I think he did talk more about the values and the social issues here than he has been, uh, uh, generally speaking, on the campaign trail, although he gave one of the best responses, I think, in one of the debates regarding marriage and the need for a marriage amendment. Uh, which he spoke to very clearly. Uh, so I, when he's asked, he talks about these issues, I think, in a very forthright way. Uh, I just think he's going to have to connect more with the values community. Yes. I do know we have folks here from Iowa, some of the social conservative leaders. I have not discussed with them uh, you know, their thoughts, uh, especially since the stronghold just came, came out. But you'll notice behind me there's a bus. Uh, I didn't know if it was obvious or not, but there's a values voter bus that uh, we will be rolling out of here uh, today, headed to New Hampshire for Tuesday's debate. Uh, then going from there over to Ohio and the swing state, so doing some events with uh, uh, with some political leaders over there. And then we will be hitting all of the swing states over the next 12 months, states that are key, including Iowa, uh, as well as states that have critical uh, Senate elections. So you'll see the values voter bus, and you might take a look at the bumper, uh, because the bumper says uh, very clearly it's not funded with taxpayers' expense, unlike uh, one of the other buses that we might pass on the road out there. Uh, of course, ours isn't black either. I'm sorry to hear you. Did he say that from the stage? Or? Yes, he said. I did not hear his speech. Oh, Ron, I thought yes. you said Brian Fisher said. I think, you know, that's, I guess that's Brian's opinion. I think Mitt Romney uh, had a right to say what he said. Nobody's speech 
here at this event. I mean, we believe in the First Amendment. We don't pre-screen anybody's speech. Let me say we don't agree with everybody's speech. Um, I think Mitt had a very uh, legitimate and poignant point that we need to be civil in our discussion. And uh, I, we underscore that. We need to have a civil debate, but a debate nonetheless. And our growing concern is that there are those, especially on the left, that are trying to cut off that debate, that do not want to debate these issues and the merits of them. But I can guarantee you this. I can't speak for every organization and every speaker who may come to our events, but I can guarantee you this from the Family Research Council. We will engage in civil debate. In uh, 2009, Paul Weirich said that he showed his mind in the air and not taking the mind one candidate and one candidate earlier in the primary. He said, I'm going to have this and he's described a couple of very conservative candidates that you and other social conservative leaders are looking more seriously at. And Charles Orwell is better than politicians. There are several candidates I like in this race, several candidates that are friends. I can only speak for myself. I cannot speak for other social conservative leaders. For me, as long as there are two or more conservatives in the race, uh, there's no need for me to uh, express a preference. I think the more that are in there talking about the value issues, the issues we care about, the better it is for the country and the better it is for our movement. On the, on the Republican side? I think there are, I'm actually pretty encouraged by the field that we have of Republican candidates. They all have staked out pretty clear positions on the life issue. Uh, they've staked out pretty clear positions on marriage. Um, so, I mean, it, there's degrees of difference, but if you think about it, we've got a pretty conservative field of candidates. The question was, you know, the, the focus is on the economy and jobs issues. How does the values issues factor in? Well, I actually think you've heard that, that this weekend in a number of speakers. I think Bobby Jindal, Governor Jindal, did that well last night. Uh, several of the presidential candidates have done that. Where, yes, it's clearly about the economy and the jobs. That's at the foremost of people's thinking and concerns. But we'll never shrink the size of government. And I speak this more to our libertarian friends as opposed to our liberal friends. We'll never shrink the size and scope of government until we strengthen the family. The reason we have big government programs is because we have dysfunctional families that have been discouraged through government policy. So there clearly is the, those two issues are intertwined. And uh, we want to continue that discussion throughout uh, this election cycle. We have time for one more question. I think there are some that were disappointed that Mike did not get in the race. I actually uh, spoke to Mike uh, quite a bit during that process as he was making that decision. I, I think that, you know, hindsight's always 2020. People got to know Mike Huckabee a lot better after the election uh, and through his work on Fox. And I think there were people that were eager for him to get in the race. And I think he would have started uh, with some immediate support. Uh, but I think as he kind of, you know, it's, it's like once you've been to that rodeo, uh, that uh, that bull doesn't look so enticing. And so uh, I respect his decision, but I think he would have started off as a very strong contender, and I think probably uh, others would not have joined the race had he gotten that. Thank you all for coming, and I do hope to see you on the road with the Values Voter Bus as we crisscross the country. And anyone like to take a ride with us, uh, we'll be happy to, to save you a seat on the bus. <laughs>